to keep you a long time because I know you got <coughs> probably family, some of you around, and maybe even at your house, I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. But we're going to look in the word of the Lord this evening. <coughs> Praise God. And I'm not going to teach about Christmas. <laughs> we talked some about that. Amen. Don't I have some pretty daughters? They're making. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I think I do. They didn't get it from me, but anyway. But we're going to look in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, and we're going to read verses 28 through 32, and then we're going to jump to Titus, chapter 2. Can I start with Titus first, Brother Dingman? Would that be all right with you? Let's turn to Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. And then we'll pray, and I'll let you be seated, and we'll turn to Luke after that. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. We're saved by grace, aren't we? Saved by grace through faith, that not of yourself, but it is the gift of God, right? It says that. So listen to what it says here. Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God... Everybody say the grace of God. The grace of God that bringeth salvation. Right? In regards to our salvation. Right? Hath appeared to all men. Red, yellow, black, and white. They're all precious in his sight. Right? Huh? Not just Jews, but to everybody. Amen. It's appeared unto all men. And this is the part I want you to pay attention to. It says, teaching us. Everybody say, teaching us. Look over somebody and say, the grace that God teaches us. It teaches us something, right? It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, where? In this present world. Now, what teaches us that? The grace of God that brings salvation, right? It teaches us that, okay? It says, it teaches us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, right now, while we're up living and operating, breathing, looking for that blessed hope. We're looking for the second coming of Jesus, right? And, that gl and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's who He is. He's the great God and He's the Savior. He's God and man. Right? Amen. Praise God. Who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us. He had a purpose in, in, in uh, giving Himself for us on the cross, right? And when I think of God as Son not sparing... Sent him to die to take away my sins. That on the cross my burdens gladly bearing. He bled and died. I didn't get it all right, did I? But he took away our sins. Amen. He gave himself for us that he, the reason why, that he might redeem us from, from, not in, but from all inequity. And do what with us? And purify unto himself a peculiar people, a people that's not like anything else around. You're different than the world, right? That's what he's talking about. It doesn't mean you're weird and strange. It just means you're, you're different. Amen. You're a, a peculiar people, and this is what makes you so different. You're zealous of good works. Oh, praise God. Amen. Lord, would you touch us tonight by the word of the Lord. Give us grace tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and be seated. Amen. Everybody say the grace of God teaches us. Now let's look at Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 11. Hallelujah. Verse number 28. Or verse number 29 actually. I got 28 in there by uh, mistake. 
But in, in Luke 11 and verse number 29, it says, And when the people were gathered thick together, <laughs> that's, that's kind of sound, it's wording there is kind of strange, thick together. Amen. He began to say, This is an evil generation that seeketh a sign. They wanted a sign, right? And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. He said the sign of Jonas the prophet. Amen. Then he says this, For as, everybody say, as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. We're going to jump back to that verse in a minute. But let me finish reading. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them for she came from the uttermost part of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold a greater than Solomon is here. So the queen of the south came all the way to see, hear the wisdom of Solomon. Praise God. And Jesus said this, this generation, the queen of the south, she, she's going to rise in judgment against this generation. That's what she sa he said there, right? And going to condemn this generation, at least the generation that Jesus was living in. And I believe it would pertain as well to the generations that we're living in if we don't believe, right? Praise God. That's what he's trying to cover. Then he says this. The, he talks about Nineveh again. He said, the men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for, for they th repented at the preaching of Jonas, which is Jonah. Remember Jonah and the whale? Everybody, everybody, I could ask one of his kids, who was Jonah? Lily, you know who Jonah was? Did he get swallowed by a big fish? He did, didn't he? Danny knew who he was. Did you know, Dan? Yeah. The fish ate him, didn't it? Yeah, okay. Praise God. So Jesus says, <clears throat> he says, The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment, in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah's. And he said, Behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jesus came uh, to the world. Amen. In his time and... And there were cities and people in the past that had a prophet sent to them. Amen. And they repented. And a greater than any of those prophets was before the generation that Jesus was present at. Amen. And he said those that had only a prophet are going to rise in judgment against them because they were affected by the prophet or by King Solomon of his time and were touched by the, what they uh, possessed with the Lord. Amen? Praise God. And Jesus walked the earth and, and Jesus did great things and many people uh, in his generation did not receive him. Amen? Don't be surprised if you run across folks sometimes that do not receive you. Some of them did not receive Jesus out of all the miracle signs and wonders that he did. Did you understand that? Yes. Praise God. Amen. I've thought before, Lord, if you'll just, God, so much use the church and the gifts of the Spirit, people will come and fill the place. Amen. But the truth of the matter is that even at that, a lot of times people don't come. Amen. People have got to want the truth. Amen. But I got to thinking about what Jesus said here in verse number 34. As Jonah was a sign. You read that? For as Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. So what was Jesus saying there? As Jonah was a sign so also shall the Son of Man be. In other words, Jesus said that there were resemblances between Jonah and the Son of Man. There were resemblances. You know, Jesus himself in another place, I didn't dig this scripture out, but he said, 
As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish of the well, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Jesus said that's a, that's a resemblance. Did he say that? He used Jonah as a resemblance. So what is so much of a resemblance in Jonah and the Son of Man, which is Jesus? What is the resemblance that you can see and, and gather from the likeness of those two scenarios? Amen. And I got to thinking about it. Amen. Jonah was a preacher that was called by God to go to Nineveh and preach to them. They were very evil, very wicked, those people were. And they were, uh, I've heard it said, they were known for filleting preachers. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's not the, the best thing that a preacher like, likes to encounter whenever he's preaching. Amen. To be filleted. I like filleted catfish, but I don't want to be a fillet. <laughs> I prefer not to encounter that if that's at all possible. Amen. They were very vile, very wicked, very idolatrous. Amen. And God got fed up with it. And God said, Jonah... He was a prophet. He said, you go to Nineveh and you tell them yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And so Jonah, being the obedient prophet he was, went the other way. <laughs> being the disobedient prophet he was, he went another way. Can you imagine hearing the voice of God and then running from it? Well, I guess it's not too unfamiliar. There's a lot of people really does that. The voice of the Lord speaks to them, and they just, you know, they don't want to come that way. Well, Jonah got himself in a heap of trouble by uh, running away from uh, God. He boarded a ship, and he was headed to Tarshish, if my memory serves me right. Amen. He wasn't headed to... Nineveh to preach to those folks and to warn them. Amen. He was headed the other way. He boarded a ship, but unfortunately for Jonah, uh, God had already, no telling how many years, you see God knows the end from the beginning. And the Bible says that the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Amen. Amen. Did you know it took a lot of years for that fish to probably grow? And the Lord foreseeing and foreknowing all things, knowing what Jonah was going to do, he prepared a fish that was going to swallow him. Praise God. Jonah boarded that ship, and it wasn't probably long after that the ship, the sea began to get kind of rough, topsy-turvy, and the next thing you know, they're about to sink. And the sailors are heathens, amen, and they're calling on their gods, amen, and they cast lots and say, to find out, as we mentioned about lots the other day, heathen people partook of that as well. They cast lots on who was guilty of all this trouble of, that the gods were, were uh, about to cause them to, to, to be lost, amen, in the sea. Their ship was about to sink, and the lot fell on Jonah. And they went to Jonah. He was down asleep in the ship. He must have liked to be cradled or something. I don't know. But anyway, he was asleep in the bow of the ship or the bottom of the ship. And the sailors came and tell us, they got a hold of him and said, Tell us why uh, this thing has happened to us. And Jonah began to confess, and he began to tell them, I'm a prophet, and God has sent me on a task, and uh, I have been disobedient unto him. Amen. Praise God. Jonah got himself in a heap of trouble uh, for disobeying God. And they said, well, what shall we do that the sea will calm down? And Jonah said, if you'll take me. I don't know if I told them that. <laughs> 
I don't know how smart he was, but he said, if you'll take me, you'll throw me overboard, you know. The, what, the wrath of God will be appeased, and, uh, you know, you, everything will settle down. And so they didn't want to do it, but they was about to lose their lives. So it was gonna, either going to be him or us. And so they did what Jonah had told them, and they threw him overboard, and the sea calmed, and then they began to offer sacrifices to that God that Jonah was serving. Amen. Amen. Praise God. They realized Jonah was connected to the real God. Amen. And he was getting in trouble himself. And they realized that God you know, eased the judgment once they got Jonah overboard. Amen. But God had a fish ready to eat him. Amen. Could you imagine being swimming out in the lake? And a big fish just come. And the next thing you know, you find yourself in, around a fish's tonsils. <laughs> Jonah found himself inside of, I don't know if a fish has tonsils, but... Amen. Jonah find himself in not only the throat of the well, but he found himself, according to Jesus, in the belly, in the stomach. And all of a sudden, he finds himself being very irritated. He's got seaweed all around his head from what the fish has eaten already and probably partially eaten, digested whatever the fish had eaten, you know. It would have been my luck that he would have been a scavenger fish, you know, and been eating all the, the manure and stuff off of the floor, you know, of the, of the ocean. But uh, I don't know what all he had in him, but the stomach acid of that fish found itself began to eat away at him. You know, he was a, he was a horrible mess. And, and if you read in the book of Jonah, you'll find out that Jonah says... Uh, that he, he discovered that they that for uh, sake uh, God's mercy, amen, praise God, they're going to find themselves tasting judgment, amen. Basically, I didn't quote that, but I could dig it up and show it to you, amen. But he, uh, he began to, he said that he was in the belly of hell, amen, that's what it said. And no doubt, Jonah, I like him come to, he was in there for three days and three nights, a lot of stomach acid eating on him. No telling what all. He was a pretty smelly person. And somehow or another, I think that God must have, uh, because God sustains anybody's life, God sustained his life. I believe he was right on the point of death. I just believe God wouldn't let him die. That's going to happen in the book of Revelation too. Did you know that? God's, men are going to seek to kill themselves and their death's going to flee from them. They're going to live in torment and in misery. Amen. Praise God. And I believe that's where Jonah found himself. He was disobedient to God. And he found himself, no telling, all of that fluid from that fish was probably going in his nostrils and down into his lungs and burning him like fire. Don't you imagine? The acid part. Amen. Of that fish's belly. Amen. Can you imagine your stomach is filled with stuff uh, that as tough a steak sometimes as you find yourself eating and you go ahead and eat them and they still go through your system because of the acid that is in your stomach and it digests and goes through you? Can, that's what Jonah found himself in the midst of. Amen. There's dogs and stuff that they eat. They literally eat bones and swallow them. And those things are dissolved by the acid, I suppose, in the stomach. Can you imagine the horrible place Jonah found himself? And by the time he found himself repenting, he was repenting, and he realized you know, even in the horrible situation that he found himself in, God heard his repentant cry. Amen. And at that time, when, at his conversion, amen, when he was ready to do God's will, when he had, had a change of heart, amen, God, at his repentance, God commanded that fish to go and puke Jonah up. Sounds kind of gory. I wanted it to sound gory. Amen. He vomited him up in all the slime and all the guck and gook that, that was in him. And can you imagine, I remember hearing Brother Oggs preach one time. He preached about Jonah, you know. He preached actually about Jonah seeing himself. 
he wasn't able to see himself, you know. The poor a figure of a man that was unable to see who he really was. Amen. But anyway, could he said, you, could you imagine, you know, if you go to any kind of a, 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 a place where there's beautiful beaches and stuff like that, you're always going to see people out on the beach, beach combers, people that just live out the beach, beach bums, you know, living out on the beach, <laughs> kind of like hippies, you know. They're out there. Can, he said, can you imagine what they uh, saw whenever they saw this fish swim up, on, up to the shore and they puked this thing out? Yeah. Amen. Right. <laughs> and, and here this man comes out of all this gunk and slime, acid-eating skin all over the place, seaweed about him. It does say he had seaweed, I believe, about him. Seaweed all over him. He's a mess. Amen. Pray. I don't know that he was married, but I mean his wife didn't want nothing to do with him for a while. You know, some of you guys come in pretty smelly from work, but Jonah was in a pitiful shape. Amen. Praise God. But anyway, that fish puked him up, and as Brother Og said, could you imagine what those beach combers were saying? And Jonah hits the beach, and he's ready to preach. He's going through Nineveh, and he says, can't you imagine them beach uh, combers uh, that are around the beach there saying, you better listen to him. You ought to see how he got here. <laughs> oh, my. Praise God. I want you to know something. There was something about Jonah's preaching that it converted that entire town. Yeah. Amen. They, the king got word of it, and they commanded a decree. Everybody go on a fast. And they fasted. They wouldn't even let the animals eat. They got in sackcloth and ashes. They got serious with God. Amen. To the point where God said, I'm going to forgive them. (laughs) And Jonah got mad. He had converted a whole city to God and then got mad about it. Amen. They really got right with God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. They got in sackcloth and ashes. They repented. They changed. And Jonah went out to the hillside to see the judgment come. Amen. And God forgave them. And then Jonah, he kind of had a pouting fit. Amen. And he said to God, you know what he said to God? That's why I didn't want to come. That's why I did not want to come. Because I knew that if you, if they would repent, that you would forgive them. You read it. It's in there. That if they would repent, you maybe he had some of his preacher friends filleted. I don't know. You know, but there was something. Amen. He was wanting to see the judgment come. I want you to know something. But Jesus said this. He said, For as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevehs, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. In other words, there are resemblances in what Jesus did and what Jonah did. Amen. The Bible says, The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men teaching us it teaches us something and we can look at Jonah and what he experienced and went through and we can find out some things that's very similar to what Jesus did now not an exact type by no means because Jesus didn't have the attitude that that Jonah's had that Jonah had amen but what did Jonah do Jonah amen He tasted, listen to me, Jonah tasted judgment from being disobedient to God. Amen. And the Ninevites saw it, and they repented when he came preaching. Amen. They got right. But the generation that Jesus came to, he came with the grace of God. Amen. And Jesus also tasted judgment. But he didn't taste the judgment for his sins. He tasted the judgment for our sins. Oh, praise God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. 
Praise God. So the grace of God is a teacher. We can look at Jonah and we can see that a rebellion against God, sin against God brings judgment. And we can look at Jesus Christ and we can see that the sin that we have committed, amen, the sins that we have done is what caused judgment to come to him. Can I tell you, if Jesus had not come and tasted judgment, you would be tasting judgment. Yeah, amen. amen. It's because of Jesus that the wrath of God has been lifted off of us. The message of Jonah is, is that if you will repent, God will forgive you no matter how bad your past has been. Amen. And I want you to know something. The grace of God teaches us, listen to me, that we are not to sin. We can look at the death of Jesus on the cross and we see that sin will be judged. But if we will repent, amen, there is a God that's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There is a God that wishes for each and every one, each and every life, amen, to get out of the life of sin. The grace of God that has appeared to all men, which is Jesus, amen, teaches us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live now soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. It teaches us, listen to me, that we shall not continue in sin. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And I'm making sense unto you tonight. Amen. The grace of God is a teacher. Jesus going to the cross is a teacher. It teaches us that the wages of sin is death. For Jesus tasted death for all men. We ought to look at the cross. A lot of people look at the cross and they see the love of God. And I look at the cross and I see the love of God. But I also see an illustration not to continue in sin. Because sin will get judged. Sin will taste judgment, just like Jonah tasted the judgment of God, and just like Nineveh repented because they had sinned. Amen. And God lifted the judgment because they repented. We also can find hope in Christ if we will repent, but God forbid that we should continue in sin. Amen. Amen. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Oh, praise God. I say the grace of God teaches us that we are to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And we should now live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You mean right now, Brother Ratliff? I mean right now. Amen? While we're walking in shoe leather, it's time to live for God. Amen? It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to quit sin, right? Come on, sin. The wages of sin are is still death. Amen? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Is that what it says? Somebody say, praise the Lord. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. Amen. Praise God. Sin brings judgment. That's what the grace of God teaches. That's what Jesus going to the cross teaches. But it also teaches us that God loves us and does not want us to die in our sins, but turn and find salvation. Amen. Praise God, no matter how bad we've been, no matter how far we went into sin, there is a God that does not want us to perish. Praise God, but just like sending Jonah to call men to repentance, God sends numerous preachers to call men to repentance. Amen? Amen. Oh, but will people believe? Jesus said the generation that he was living in, that they would rise in judgment against those other places because after all the mighty things that they had seen and they had heard, they continued on in their way. Amen. God requires men to repent. Amen. Amen. Repent and believe the gospel. And repent includes getting out of the sin and getting into the life, living soberly, righteously, and godly. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Don't go to sleep on me, amen? Praise God, amen. It teaches us that there is a penalty to sin. And it also teaches us there is forgiveness to those that will repent. Amen. Romans 6, 23 says the wages are what you get paid for, right? For sin is death. And we're talking about eternal death, folks. We're not talking about just going to the grave, the common grave. We're talking about, listen to me, you are an eternal being. And if you live the life of sin, 
Amen. It will cost you. Amen. Men must repent. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, it is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5, 12 says, By one man sin, talking about Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin. How many men has death affected? So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. All have had a death warrant upon them. Amen? And the only way to get that lifted is by repenting and believing in Jesus. Amen? Giving ourselves to Him. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray, Isaiah 53, 6. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, on that man Jesus. And when I think of God his son not sparing, send him to die to take away my sins. Right? That's what that song said. Amen. The Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all according to Hebrews 2 and 9 Jesus Christ amen amen he by the grace of God tasted death for every man in other words instead of me having to taste it instead of me having to go through it amen praise God Jesus took the death that belonged to me and he took the death that belonged to you does that give us a license to sin Romans 6 1 what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Everybody say, absolutely not. We're not to continue a life of sin. Absolutely not. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? We die to sin, right? How shall we live any longer therein? Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15 says this. For the love of of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then were all dead all had the sentence of death on them all were dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth in other words no more live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again after what he's done for me, I'm no longer to go my own way. I am to go his way. Amen? And his way is living soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen? Praise God. Peter instructed us, 1 Peter 1, 14. It says, as obedient children, Christians, as obedient children. We need to be obedient children, not disobedient children. Don't be like Jonah. Come on, we need to be as obedient children. Jonah was disobedient and faced the wrath of God. We need to learn from that, amen? Amen, we need to learn from that. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance. In other words, don't live like you did in the past before coming to God. But as he which has called you, the one you're linked up to, when you're linked up to the Lord, as he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. That means your behavior, in all manner of your behavior. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. The reason God wants you to be holy is because he is holy. If you need a reason to be holy, it's because he who you believe in is holy. He's not unholy. Amen. I said he's not unholy. You're linked up to somebody that's a holy God. Amen. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. You know what that's saying? You need to stop and listen to that. He's, he's not a respecter of person. Jonah, if you run in disobedience, it's, you're going to be punished for it. You're a prophet of God, but you're going to suffer punishment for what you're doing. God is, listen to me, being a Christian is not a license to live any old way. God wants us to live right. 
God wants us to live holy. God wants us to live godly. Amen. We need to pass the time of our sojourning. We're just passing through. We're in a place that we don't live. We're not going to live forever. Amen. We're going to heaven. Come on. We're passing the time of our sojourning here in fear, in the fear of God. In other words, we don't just live any old way. We fear God and we keep his commandments. Amen. Oh, come on, we walk with him, and we live for him. We live in this world soberly, righteously, and godly every day. Not just when we enter into this building, but when we leave here and we walk out there in the world. We're a light in a dark place. We're peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen. Come on, God has created us to be so. Amen. If we go out and we're not like it, if we're like everybody else, we don't have any light in us. We're not showing the world nothing when we're just like them. When we live the way we used to live before coming to the Lord, they got the same thing we got if we do that. Amen. God has created us to be a a peculiar people. In other words, like nothing else around so that the world can look and they can find God. They can have an example of what it means to live for God. I'm not going around with a holier than their attitude. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being a light in a dark place, like Jesus was a light in a dark place. Amen. Be holy because he's holy. And he's not a respecter of person. Amen. He counts it, he considers it. This is the way God thinks about it. Romans 12 and 1, and I'm thinking to quit. He said, Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. I'm urging you, Christians. Right? He's urging, I beseech you. I'm, I'm trying to compel you to. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. You, you, come on. You present your bodies. Your bodies, a living sacrifice. Amen. When people look at you, I can see your body. I can see the actions of your spirit. God sees even deeper than that. Amen. He knows your thought life. He knows everything. But the world seeing your body and your actions, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. When people look at you, they see a living sacrifice. A sacrifice is something you give to God. Amen. When people look at you, God wants you to, people to look at you and see somebody that's given to God. Given to God. A sacrifice. Holy. Come on. Holy means pure. I said holy means pure. Without contaminant. Come on. Amen. Without contaminant. Oh, praise God. Y'all got quiet on me. (laughs) A living sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God. You're not trying to be acceptable to people. You're trying to be acceptable to God, right? And he says, which is your reasonable service. And after, in other words, after what Jesus did for you at at the cross, it's the least you can do. It It is reasonable for you to do this. Amen. And be not conformed to the world. Don't take the image of the world. But be transformed, be changed. How are you going to do it? You've got to change the way you think by the renewing of your mind that you to the world might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God has you on display to the world, Christian. He has you on display to the world. Amen. That you can show forth the praises of Him that has brought you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I'm going to get it out of you. I'm going to at least try to keep you awake. Amen. Praise God. You want to walk with Jesus? Come on, you want to please Him? Praise God. I want you to know something. Especially those of us which have experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Jesus told that generation that He was in, a greater than Jonas is here. And you will rise in judgment against Jonas and against the queen 
of the south. Amen. Because Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonas. And a greater than Jonas is there. And a greater than the queen of the south is there. And she came to see Solomon. But you've walked away from Jesus. Amen. He told his generation that. And you'll rise in judgment. How much more with us, folks? We have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We got a Savior that's given his life to redeem us from all inequity. Amen. We need to take advantage of it and live with him, for him, for with everything that's inside of our hearts. Amen. Oh, come on. Don't keep being the old creature you used to be. Stand up and be something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Live for him. Oh, praise God. Amen. Well, we're not running the aisles. We're not shouting, but I do feel like I've preached what the Lord gave me. Amen. Amen. God wants you to be on display to the world. Not in self-righteousness with a humble spirit showing all those around you there is a people that fears God and lives for Him. Amen. Yeah, I don't go certain places. Yeah, I don't participate in certain things. Yeah, I don't say certain words. Amen. And I may be praising the Lord when I'm going through a trial instead of cursing. Instead of freaking out and, and going ballistic whenever I'm going through a trial, I am in the calm of the storm because my Savior is with me and the world's watching Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Lord. (sighs) We're on display, folks. I said, we're on display. I guess you wanted to hear about Christmas, didn't you? (laughs) Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. But I'm preaching to you tonight about what God is really about. It's about living for him. It's about the cross. I thank God it's Christmas. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time fellowshipping with your family. God bless you. Enjoy it. Enjoy one another's love. But be a light for Jesus. Come on. Come on. When they want to give you a toddy for the body, say, no, I used to do that, but I'm living for the Lord now. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand. I won't keep you. Praise God. Live for Jesus. What a wonderful surprise to have my kids.